Dabba! Hey, William! The Eurovision Song Contest 2023 is coming to the United Kingdom on behalf of Ukraine. Yeah! <laughs> yeah. And someone or several people have to host it. Shall we talk about it? <laughs> Let's do that! That is right. In recent years, we have seen the glorious Petra Med, uh, Mika, Alex Catalan, um, Ozzy oh, So many good names. Mm -hmm. So many amazing people hosting. The question is, for 2023, who do you want to see? Mm, okay, good question. It's definitely, I would love a lot of Ukrainian involvement, you know. Um, they won the show. They actually won Eurovision 2023. So I would like, I would love to see a Ukrainian presenter or presenters. Well, Timur obviously jumps out. He, yes. of course, has hosted Junior Eurovision twice in Ukraine. He hosted the Eurovision Song Contest 2017 in Ukraine alongside Vova. And who was the other gentleman? Oleksandr. It was Vova, yes. Oleksandr, and Timur. Timur, of course, um, went viral when images of him presenting, or rather commentating on Eurovision 2022 went viral. He was in a bomb shelter. Um, so, he, you know, his passion for the show is undeniable, and I think he understands the importance of Eurovision to the Ukrainian people in telling their story. Um, so he seems like the obvious choice, you know? Yeah. It just, he, I will say this. I think he can be a bit serious, and so you need to pair him with someone a bit more loose so that there's perfect chemistry. These are serious times. Yeah, I mean, it's a fair point. Um, but Eurovision, you know, even during the pandemic was still a celebration, right? Because it reminds people of the power of music to heal, to sort of help us um, move forward, um, to give people a bit of respite from other things that are happening. In any case, so if we leave Timor to the side, and we focus on the UK and some British presenters. Oh, British presenters, right. And there's one obvious one. A certain Graham Norton. Thank you. Thank you. Or Scott Mills, that's another yeah. obvious one. We're gonna take these in turn. Graham Norton, he of course hosts probably the most popular chat show here in the UK. Yeah, oh well, Jonathan Ross, depending on when you look at the yeah. figures, it's a, you know, it's between both of them. My personal preference is Graham Norton. Mm -hmm. I think his show is hilarious. It is so funny. You know, I was in the red chair once and he dunked me. Nah. He dumped me, <laughs> and they cut it from the show. I am still bitter, but no, he's got this great personality. People recognize him. He did Eurovision's Greatest Hits a few years Absolutely. ago. Absolutely. Did you enjoy him there? Oh, I enjoy him every time, all day, every day. I think he's really good, and he knows how to keep that humor up, and yeah. he knows how to interact with stars and. It's not easy assembling people from completely different disciplines on a, on a red sofa and chatting with like four people at a time, not leaving a single one out. And yeah. at the same time, bringing your studio audience in and the TV audience. It's actually very tricky to do. Very tricky. And he does it with aplomb. I love how he's a little dirty. He sometimes rides very close um, to that line. He doesn't tow it. He sort of rides it. Um, what else? The other thing I like about Graham Norton is that you can be humorous, but at the same time, respectful. I, yeah. You know, I feel like, so, you know, some of the people that have commented on Eurovision from the UK perspective, uh, it, it, you know, previously have made comments that have been just difficult to you know, embrace just because it's a little disrespectful. But yeah, he's funny without really sending anyone home in tears. Yeah, absolutely. But Devin, a natural question arises. If Graham presents the show, can he still do the commentary for the BBC during the show for the UK audience? There is no... Terry no, Logan. you can't. You can't. Because it's, a live, it's, a, it's a live show. I mean, it's, it's... Didn't Terry Logan do it, though? I don't know that for a fact. I think this day and age, it would be more difficult. Yeah. Um, I don't even think he, Terry Wogan could have done it because you can't, you can't provide commentary on a show, on a live show, and at the same time present it. I think it would just be impossible. Despite being one of the presenters, Terry Wogan still managed to provide his trademark commentary, comedy commentary, to the contest for the BBC. 
So it can be I done. love how you are this go-to resource for all things Eurovision. This is actually the eurosong-contest.fandom.com wiki. Let's just pretend it <laughs> was from William B. But you know what? It, it could be done. However, would he want that stress? That's a lot of uh, back and forth. You know what's even really controversial here? He could just prefer to stick to what he already yeah. does. Which then opens up another question. If he sticks yeah. and does his commentary, who would you pick? Well, okay, there are a few things. One, I heard a rumor, just a rumor, that Dermot O'Leary could do it. Now, a lot of people are like, why would you go outside and get Dermot Leary, bring him back on? Well, he's experienced hosting these big shows. He did X Factor, right? Like, he was yeah. the face of X Factor. Um, you'll say, just very briefly, hon. So he's used to the live TV thing. Um, he's telegenic. Yeah. He's a great presenter. Yeah. Uh, looks but then, good. But he then looks I good. think if you're going to get Dermot O'Leary, then why can't we just get Emma Willis? Oh, big brother. Will he let her? <laughs> Will he release her? Emma Willis, a former model, then a TV presenter, hosted Big Brother for so long. Hosted The Voice. And I, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So music, but also the drama. I feel like with Big Brother, you've got to be able to calm people down. People come out that house, they're not always happy. And it's a live show. They're not always articulate either. And, you know, you get that at Eurovision as well. And I think having a host who can comfort people, bring out their best quality, that's really good. But I gotta say, there's someone I prefer to all of these people. Before you launch into whoever that person is, can we discuss Scott Mills? Scott Mills has a great knowledge base, a great love of Eurovision. He's a lifelong fan, very passionate, very kind. Again, th there's a similar problem with Graham Norton. They both have existing commitments, right? Because Scott Mills does his commentary during the semifinals. Scott Mills, um, he has like a podcast or he kind of like looks at the rider, uh, runners and riders. He has other things he does. So and his radio show as well, all year hugely long. Hugely popular. Yeah, hugely popular. So what do you do? Do you get stand-ins for that? Or do they want to keep doing their existing platform? Like, it's really complicated. And I'm assuming, you know, UK hosting Eurovision, like, already the workload goes up because they both yeah. love Eurovision, so they're going to try and incorporate more elements of Eurovision into their existing show. You know what I love about Scott Mills? Did you watch the host city reveal on the Zoe Ball? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And they, they played the this on the drum roll and everything. Okay, Scott's opening the gold envelope. And so, Scott, who are they? In alphabetical order, the seven cities shortlisted to host the 2023 Eurovision Song Contest are. He was so enthusiastic and happy, and it was sincere. It was sincere, and I think that kind of, um, that quality really comes through on TV. You've always been a huge fan of him. I don't know, I'm a big fan. He's always been oh, yeah, really nice, very supportive. So, ain't here for no drama. We are hashtag Team Scott. Listen, there is someone else on my radar. You may have a long lost relative who you want to find through DNA testing, and she can help you out. It is Davina McCall! Whenever I watch Long Lost Family, I end up bawling, just bawling. And so do the people who are on the show. And she's so warm. She really takes them under her wing. She guides them through the proceedings. She gives them bad news off. And sometimes she has to tell them that their long lost relative who they've been searching for has passed away. She's a veteran. I mean, she's just really good. And she's very engaging, very funny, very charismatic, very personable. And again, you know, she loves music and she loves music shows. I mean, yeah. you talk about Big Brother, um, actually. She did she it for many sort years. She's sort of, the in my mind, the face of Big Brother. Mm. And also, she's very telegenic. She does a lot of yoga. You can see it on her Instagram. She can cope with the physical stress of Eurovision. She will be there for the whole marathon. She's very likable. She's so likable. There's just an ease to her. And I think you need someone easy breezy. You don't want someone stiff and nervous. Um, one of the issues I've had with the Eurovision hosts in recent years, not always, but sometimes they can be very stiff and wooden or there's no chemistry between them. Um, My biggest issue with Eurovision hosts is when I'm watching the show, I just kind of think, oh, totally unnecessary. Yeah, you don't totally need unnecessary. them. Totally unnecessary. Petra single-handedly <laughs> delivered the best show and then yeah. you have four four people on stage and they can barely get it right. Yeah, and they're like fighting over each other, stumbling over each other. I mean, or delayed reactions to the program jokes. And you yeah. think, 
No, no, you should have come in two seconds a bit earlier. Also, I think a scriptwriter can work better with one person if they really know them and understand them, so it feels more natural. Like with Petra, her team clearly knew her, her humor, how she delivers. Edward that still was yeah. a scriptwriter. Yeah, and they're dear that. friends. Oh. Whereas Torino, no offense, all three of those presenters are great on their own, but together it did not work. I, I love felt... how you pluck from recency, but I would even say Vienna. Oh Look my that god. Mess. <laughs> that was just bad. Robotic. But on their own, they're all actually great and they all have their own thing. But it's about making it. I'm not today. even sure at this no, point. They I are. think Conchita was the only one that saved the day. But yeah, Torino, I was like, the script was so cheesy. Because basically, when you're trying to make three people fit, what works? Humor can be very difficult with the timing. So they gave them these cheesy. Mika, who's fabulous on his own, felt wooden. He felt really wooden. And he didn't even memorize the script. No. He'd been engaged to it for the past six weeks. And this there was the whole thing about, we are the future. We are the light. We are the... I was like, girl, Hot this mess. is not some high school valedictory address. You know, it just it really didn't Hot work mess. for me. But look, we need to get back to the potential host Love in the this UK. Love this show-stopping medley, though. That he was on say. point. But you know what? I don't think you have to have a host who can sing. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, let the contestants be the singers and let the host be Although, the Although, when Manzemelov did host with Petra, it was nice that they had that singing moment, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well... Better start your voice less. Girl, girl, you're crazy. You're crazy. Start girl, your voice. Davina McCall. I just think she'd be wonderful. Another woman who is on my short list. And Zoe Ball? Oh, she's fabulous. She's not on my short list, actually. Great. She is fabulous. I love she's her She's great. Short. In the morning when you hear her, you wake up. She's chirpy. She's happy. She's on Celebrity Gogglebox. But no, I was thinking of a chef. A chef who delivered the UK's Eurovision points a few years ago. You know Nigella who it is? Nigella Lawson. And we do sport à la Suède. Nadia Lawson, Sweden. Points. You almost said Nadia Hussein. You almost said Nadia Hussein. No, it is Nigella Lawson. This woman has been through everything. She's come out on top. Her recipes are delicious. Her show, she's telegenic. I love how she is kind of, what's the word, flirty with the camera. She knows how to speak to the camera and make people stare at the camera. She loves the camera. The camera loves her. And I love her beef fatta aubergine dish with that pomegranate on top. Mm, mm, mm. I love her fish finger borta. Have you had this? No. Oh I didn't even know you met her. Oh, I've never met her, but I watch her <laughs> show and I follow her recipes and I go on her website. <laughs> So I God. feel, I feel like, like I know her through know her cooking. Her. Well, I know her spiritually, and I just think she's absolutely brilliant. I think she, of all the people I've seen on TV in the UK, she's one of the most natural. She's just so easygoing. I, am I getting skepticism from you? Uh, no, I mean, like, the, the trouble with the UK is that there's just a wide pool of talent. And I'm not suggesting there isn't a wide pool of talent mm. elsewhere, but it, we live here. So we know who these, you know, I could say Frankie Bridge, Rochelle yeah. Hume, Sarah Cox, Lisa Ianson. I mean, the list goes Okay, I on. literally didn't know any of those people. But <laughs> <laughs> Nigella is actually very famous abroad as well. Her show's in the United States. Her show is syndicated throughout Europe. I saw her in the Netherlands when I was there last time on the telly. Like, she is a known face, and I think it's- And we know she's gonna show some cleavage. A Amen. And you know what? More I'm all about that. You know, I'm all about that. Confidence. <laughs> confidence is the thing. And she's got Natural. that. Natural. <laughs> oh, yes. It's like Diane Furstenberg said. The best way to age gracefully is to age naturally. Nigella, she's stunning. She's absolutely stunning. But I think it's also a little left field, right? And he like, has met Diane von Furstenberg. We're not going to discuss that here. We are not going to discuss that here. But all I will say is this. Nigella, to me, would be a left field choice I could live with. Oh, you know what? Let's just put names in a hat and draw from there. There's just AJ so Dudu. many. Amazing. No, she gave the most recent 12 points mm -hmm. from Manchester mm -hmm. during the show in Torino. People really responded to her. Did she do Big Brother's bit on the side? Yeah, she did Big Brother's bit on the side. And she also, I have a, the sense that you don't know who she is. <laughs> you can keep it real. Uh, uh, what's the one that Oliver Adams really loves? Is it Chelsea Grimes? Married at First Sight Afters. AJ Odudu also did Married at First Sight Afters. I've never heard of this show. But listen, young people have. And um, the fact is she's gorgeous. She's got 
how do I say it? She's got a really good spirit. Like you want to be her friend. Can you can you Google her photo? Images? She's stunning. You look. She is stunning. Look. Yeah. Miss <laughs> United okay. Kingdom. Oh, there boy. you go. Legs for days. Abs like the snow days. tomorrow. Wow. Killing it. Why is she with Bruce Willis? Oh. Okay. We're not going to discuss that. And she also did Strictly Come Dancing. On fire. Wow. Do you know who Chelsea Grimes is? Yeah. Yeah. C H E L C double -E. e. She's often rumored to be a potential Eurovision singer. Oh. Often. Yeah. She's a fo female footballer as well, right? Um, but 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 I think that she loves Eurovision, and again, oh yeah, you would know. like to see her. Yeah, I don't, I don't. I haven't actually seen her present. Oh, she did the semifinals for the yeah. UK one year. Actually. Yeah, no, she does love Eurovision. All right, let's get through the Smarkets list. Our friends at Smarkets also have right. Well, Graham Norton's the favorite, mm -hmm. with like a sixty-eight percent chance, according to this. But then Rylan. Oh second. my God! Absolutely. So this is really interesting. I think if Graham Norton graduated on to hosting the show, maybe they would let Rylan do his commentary. And Rylan is excellent. Yeah. Rylan is really excellent. You know, there's such a sincerity about Rylan, yes. and also his, um, his, his. Aesthetic is very Eurovision, right? What do you mean? Oh, I mean in terms of his appearance, his sensibilities, the kind of music that he likes. I mean, mm. goodness, Rylan knew every single word to your Nida Malici's. Um, yeah. I mean, like, we don't even know that. Yeah, I that's mean, like, beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. I like his physical presence. He's very tall. And I think on stage, he could be a really good centerpiece, really grounding the show. Because you may be 3,622 feet in the back, but you will see Rylan Clark. Neal. And he's a part of this community, London Eurovision yeah. Party. He doesn't miss it. He shows up parties and, you know, like he's not, yeah, he can do high, he can do low. Yeah. He was great. at the Wee Wee Jam in Turin. T Turin? Torino. Torino, sorry. <laughs> He was there, he was a partying, he was having a great time. Scott Mills was there as well. I love I love their support. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ryan will be excellent. He would be good. I also love his mother. Have him and his mother do it together. Oh, do you watch Celebrity no, Goggle Box? No. Whenever that woman is on, I just I'm like, shut up, shut up. I wanna hear what she has oh to my say. God. She's so funny. She's so oh funny. Oh my god. They have a really good um relationship good chemistry very playful but rylan i believe just has good energy with everybody he and he's the so room. into um pop culture mm, and absolutely i think that if you get rylan and you confirm him early you could even get steps to do it you Ex could even excuse get excuse me do we want steps to do it you've always been a huge fan of steps you've even I seen them in we went to their concert huge together man until they kind of slagged off eurovision repeatedly like repeatedly in interviews, sort of being like, why'd we do that? Oh my gosh, it's all political, blah, 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 blah. I'm not into all that. And also, uh, I, yeah, I, I, hate just, I feel I, your pain. I don't have the energy for that. Alison Hammond, hilarious. You don't know Alison Hammond? <laughs> she's also on Celebrity Goggle Box, I believe. I don't know who she is. She's you whole, her. you'll recognize her. She is so funny. She is so funny. I'm so behind on popular culture. Oh! Of she course I know her. Didn't she interview Janet Jackson? Did she? She interviewed Janet Jackson. Alison Hammond. Are you kidding me? She's from Birmingham or some... She is fire. I mean, she does um, a lot of work with ITV this morning, I believe. She is amazing. Do you think that's an issue? Do you think the BBC would go outside of the house of BBC? Talent pool is talent pool. And yeah. We're, and we, we are, talent pool can be displaced. I just find her so funny. She's In the great. green room, she would really make people laugh. She would put them at She's ease. warm. She's engaging. She's funny. She's yeah. relatable. I love her fashion. She can really go out there oh, when she has to. Lizzo 2.0. Um, yeah, everything confident. about her. Her Can't is fire. I love her so much. Love her so much. She, oh, no, no. Her interview with Janet Jackson, gotta check it out, girl. Uh, girl, I'm ready. Together again, here we go. Alex Jones. Alex Jones. Who is she? BBC One Show. Like, I think she's the highest or one of the highest paid presenters in the Face. entire corporation. Face. Google. Very warm again. On that sofa, 7 p.m. Not that Alex. That's the, no, that's a conspiracy theorist. Let me type in Alex Jones BBC. Sorry. There we go. You know, know Alex her, Jones. love her. There you go. On there you point. go. Yeah. She is good. She is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Claudia Winkleman, is she on your list? Yes. Oh, she is. She's actually great. Strictly Come Dancing. I think there's a real ease to her as well. I love her look. She's got such a strong look. She can work a frock like no other. You could see her having 32 Everything about dress her changes totes amazing. in that show. Strictly is a stressful show to present as well. They often have very tight time constraints. Oh my goodness. My absolute favorite presenter in the UK. Can you guess who it is? My absolute favorite. Like, bar none, my absolute favorite. And I cannot believe I've not mentioned this person. Your absolute favorite presenter. Absolute me. favorite. Here's my Crack, no. Cracks me up. He's a chatty man. Alan Carr. He's so funny. Oh my God. He's so He's a dream. funny. It's horrible. And I say, I'm afraid you're going home. And then they're crying. And then you're like, bye. <laughs> He's, I would love Alan Carr. He's literally the most. See, I put that. I, Alan Carr. The most hilarious of Alan any Carr. presenter. Alan Carr 100%. is dynamite. And he has a very strong look. You don't forget him. The big glasses. Dynamite. Just. And you know, he takes the piss out of himself constantly. Oh, no, no, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. And he's brilliant. That self-deprecating humor makes, endears him to you. And you like want brilliant. him to do well. And he's just so... He could literally read the phone book, recite happy birthday. Um, it would be hilarious. Oh, just brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. But he would be better for Green Room. Oh, my God. Well, the thing is, there might be problems because he'd be so funny. Everyone would be laughing. And then you wouldn't necessarily be able to cut away the camera and the show would go on for 10 hours. But I'm here oh, for yeah, But then, you know what? Package and sell those bonus features. Yeah. Does he still have a talk show? No. Oh. It didn't get renewed. What the hell? Oh. I can't believe it. And yeah. he had some amazing guests. I'm always oh re do, watching reruns on YouTube. And they don't know how to react to him sometimes. Yeah. And he's just, he's so inappropriate in the best possible way. Oh my God. Some great <laughs> interviews. Like with Britney Spears. On point. Girls well, look, Aloud. This, we could go on for days. I mean, it's just... Holly Willoughby, Greg James, Tess Daly, Stacey Dooley, Nick Grimshaw. Tess Daly, Stacey Dooley, great choice. Michelle Visage from RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, she is good too. Didn't you see? Didn't you meet her at DragCon? Or yeah, 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 yeah. She loves Eurovision. She did the commentary for Logo in the U.S. She's very much um, LGBT icon, LGBT advocate, LGBT ally. Alicia Dixon, Ali Alexander, Fern Cotton, Jack Whitehall, Sophie Ellis Baxter. Oh, she Sophie should be Ellis Baxter. An interval act. Let her murder the dance floor <laughs> in, I was going to say Torino, in London town. No, she's fire. She's Except absolutely. It won't, it won't be in London, babe. Oh. <laughs> but, hey. You know what I meant? I meant Glasgow, Birmingham, Manchester, Sheffield, Newcastle. Leeds, Liverpool, all that, all them cities. Anna Mentronic, I'm sure she'd be mentioned too. She's on the list. James Corden, Denise Van Uten, Verka, Verka Serdichka. You'll need to learn to speak English. Or Verka Serdichka will play some role, I'm sure, musically. Verka has yeah. to. It's a Ukrainian with, with a mother. Show. That Just brilliant. I love your interview with them from back in Copenhagen. Oh, yeah. That was the first time I really saw you kind of cut a fire straight through, do you know what I'm saying? Through a crowd of people to get to your goal. You were an animal on the hunt. You really were. You were. It was you. You had rabies in those five minutes. Uh, like, no, I had youth, darling. Uh, now and you had a cameraman. Uh, I was like, <laughs> let's go, let's go. Zane Lowe. Wow, he's well good. Done. Zane Lowe's good. Is he? Wait, him? Yeah, he's excellent. Oh, who's the one in One Direction? Oh no, Zane you're Malik. thinking of Zayn sorry. Malik. Sorry, no, sorry, Zayn Lowe is good. He he does interviews for Apple Music. He's excellent. Excellent. There's we're just spoiled for choice. We're spoiled for choice is the point. It's a lot. I, it's a lot. Alison Hammond. Alan Carr. You know, I always gravitate toward the funny people. Mm. So like obviously Graham Norton, Rylan, hilarious, amazing. Alan Carr, Alison Hammond, hilarious, amazing. And then on the warm front, you know, the warm front to keep everyone cozy, I'm like Davina McCall. Oh, she's good. Girl. And she's balanced. She's not, she's not too funny. She's not too serious. Yeah. And she's relatable, charismatic, amazing. Beautiful, stunning. Wasn't she L'Oreal spokesperson or? Oh, I didn't know that. Lancome. All I know is she looks good. <laughs> she looks good. And Nigella. Wow. There's just wow. so many. There is a lot. It's a lot to take in. Curveballs. Anne Robinson. Does she still present? 
She's legend. She is legend. The weakest link was everything. <laughs> it was. She was famous. She in would be too. good for announcing who's making the Martin oh. Austin <laughs> doll part. Like who's making the cup. She'd do it in reverse though. Yeah, 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 yeah. And she'd be like, Israel, I'm sorry. You are the weakest link. You know, she would be real aggressive. And the only reason I name Israel is because we're about to film a Noah Carell video. So don't be trying to come up with some, oh, he didn't, no, no, no. I love Israeli X, May Feingold. Oh, oh love, she's love, everything. love. Oh, God, I was thinking of another song. <laughs> oh, that was a tune. Who, who else would she... Um, Ding dong, you didn't make the cut. Oh, I loved her. Love her. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think of the dozens and dozens of presenters listed on the Eurovision presenter betting odds? Who is your favorite? Do you think Graham Norton will get the gig? Or is this an open race? Let us know here on Weebly Vlogs. And how many do you think there should be? Ooh. You know, how many? Ooh, you know what? Graham could do it on his own. However, they need to integrate Ukraine. So I think that does mean we have to have more than one. So, and if you have a man from Ukraine and a man from the UK, you need a woman. I just feel like you need some different energy. Well, process of elimination would be who's got the strongest Pinterest account. 2017, three men. 2018, it's four a lot women. Of testosterone. But 2018 was four women. And again, I just find that I like a more mixed picture. Celebrate diversity. Amen. You know, Amen. You, we are all about diversity in the house of Wee Wee. Who's got the strongest Pinterest accounts? William Lee Adams and I would be keen on finding out of these presenters who's got the best Pinterest account. Who works the pink bucket hat best? This is a size small. I obviously need a size large because my head is enormous. Stephania, Stephania, Stephania dun, 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 dun. no, it goes Stephania, Mamo, Mamo, Stephania, dun, 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 Stephania. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.